and God had a conversation. What did that conversation entail? Were you just asking for things and asking for things and asking for things? Were you thanking him for things? Was it a mixture of both? What was the conversation like? Today a man is somewhere proclaiming the good news, bringing families to Jesus all around his neighborhood. He tells them that God is able to make their house a home. He wants to win his world for Christ, but he
Let us pray. Father, we thank you for another day. We thank you for your blessings to us. And as we go into this program now, we ask that your Holy Spirit will be divinely near to us. May whatever is be said be something that will inspire us to have a closer walk with you. We pray in thy son's worthy name. All right. We are focusing on women in mission. I will go. And as women, I'm, we're not excluding our men by no means. And I'm happy to see the gentlemen and the brothers in the house today. And all the brothers in the house say amen. 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 Thank you so much. All right. We are going to be focusing, though, on prayer and the importance of prayer. Because you see, before we can go, before we can go, we have to have the fuel that it takes to go. Amen? All right, let me see all the persons who drive. I know that there must be more drivers. All right. And you, thank you. Do you run your vehicle on empty? No, you don't. Well, I hope you don't. All right? Yes? You won't move if you're on empty. All right? And even if you have things to do and you're hungry and tired and so on, it's like there's no energy to do it. Right, Sister Scott? Okay. So before we can go out and before we can be inspired to go out and on the mission field and to witness to others, we have to refuel. And that is what we're going to focus, and I'm not going to be long, we're just going to focus a little bit on that. We're going to be talking about praying in the last days. And is there anybody here who does not believe that we are living in the last days? All right, is there anybody here who believes that we are living in the last days? Oh, yes. And it's not just what is happening between Ukraine and Russia. It is not just the crime. It's, it, it, it's just everything. It is just everything that is pointing to the fact that we are living in the last, last days. And for those of us who might not take it seriously, listen, we need to understand what is happening. So we are going to be talking about praying in the last days. And Sister White in Testimonies for the Church uh, says, pray, yes, pray as you have never prayed before. That you may not be deluded by Satan's devices. That you may not be given to a heedless, careless, vain spirit and attend to religious duties to quiet your own conscience. Because sometimes we do. Sometimes we just go through the, 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 the format and go through the roles of whatever church activities we have. Deacon, deaconess, elder, what, Sabbath school, whatever it is that we have to do. We do it because we are expected to do it. And because we know how to do it. But that conviction and that relationship with Christ that is necessary is missing. In Child Guidance, she says, The idea that prayer is not essential is one of Satan's most successful devices to ruin souls. And I'm talking to myself, it seems. Huh? A lot, a, there are a lot of people who don't think that prayer is important, you know. Because guess what? We are bright. We have been in the church for years. And we, you know, there's nothing that the, the, the pastor or the elder or anybody can tell us that we don't know. So because we're so eloquent and we're so well-spoken and we're so knowledgeable, then we think that we are brighter than God. And we don't need prayer. She goes on to say, prayer is communication with God. The foundation of wisdom. God is the foundation of wisdom. He is the source of strength and is the source of peace and happiness. And it means that no matter what is happening around us, he will keep us safe in the eye of the storm. It has been said that prayer does not need proof outside itself because its proofs are within. It is in the nature and function of man. You see, just like how we eat and we drink and we breathe, that is how prayer should be to us. Amen? Prayer in the life of a Christian is essential, yet so few of us make it essential. As prayer meetings, and we can attest to that, prayer meetings are one of, is one of the least supported ministry in this church. 
Let me repeat. Prayer meeting is one of the least supported ministry of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And it goes to show that a lot of us really think that prayer is not important. Yes, individual prayer is important. And I hope that we pray at home. That's another story. But we will not get into that one today. Right? But when it comes on to corporate prayer, when it comes on to my praying with Sister Bowen or saying with praying uh, with Nareen, that is important. It, it's not about telling Nareen my business. It is about the fact that we need to come together as sisters and as brothers and share one another's bur and burden. And you don't have to know what the burden is. You don't have to know what the details of the burden is. It is not about finding out what people's business is. No. It is about loving your brother and sister enough to pray with them and pray for them. And while we stay at home and pray for them, it is important that we come and pray with them. Iron sharpened iron. And the fellowship of us being together. Have you ever been really down and out? And you see a brother or sister and they give you a smile and say, you know, oh, hello, sis, how are you doing? And, and, and it, just, it just makes your day. Huh? Never happened to you? No, oh, man. It seems that I'm all alone in this, Sister Nereen. Me one. Me one and God. No, seriously. COVID has done a lot in terms of separating us, in terms of physical distancing. But you see, social distancing is another thing that we mix, tend to mix the two. While we are physically apart, we should still be socially together. Because that is why we have phones. That is why, not true. And you have WhatsApp, Brother Scott, and you have, you know, CUGs. We can keep in touch with each other. And, and we need to do that. We need to understand that when we're talking about praying, it is corporate prayer and it is individual prayer. So understand that while um, prayer ministry is important and while we have um, prayer meetings as members, we need to support these. Because there is going to come a time when we need the prayer. Whether we believe it or not, there is going to come a time when I need extra prayer. And if I have not been there for you, it's going to be hard. Some of us really, you know, it's going to be hard to come and say, boy, brother Fletcher, so and so and so. And I have not been showing up for others when they have their needs. Uh, we're not going to be selfish. We're going to work together. What is prayer? Prayer is for every moment of our lives. Not just for times of suffering or when we are in trouble. And many of us, <laughs> many of us do this. You see, when things are, things are going good, we don't remember God, Brother McInnes. Because it's all about us. And it is our achievement, Sister Bowen. And it is my hard work. Right? And I have a job and, you know, I, I can pay my bills. And it is my money and it is my this and my everything. But let us remember it in an instant. In an instant, things can change. And some of us only rely on God when we are in trouble. In the good times, we don't remember God. And that is why so many of us have to stay in hard times. Because he has to be constantly putting us down so that we can lift our heads up to him. Prayer at its highest is a two-way communication where listening to God replies become more important than whatever we say to him. Some of us like to talk. And as parents, when we just talk to the parents, especially the mothers, we like to talk. Amen. They go like it's not true. Mothers like to talk. Not true. Okay, Nereen maybe doesn't talk. But mothers like to talk. And we like to know that our children are listening to us. Granted, sometimes they like my two will they have mastered the art, and I've said it, they have mastered the art of looking at me when they were younger, of course, and saying, Yes, mommy. Yes, mommy. And sis, after you, they say yes, mommy, I'm finish. We say, What did I just say? They haven't heard a word. Ask John when you see me. I'm Jenny in this year. So they have mastered the art of doing that. Now listen, it's a two-way communication. So when we, when we talk, or when we talk with God, God listens. But sometimes we talk so much that we don't wait to hear what God is saying. Because it's all about us. And we just reel off whatever we have to say. 
And you know, it's, it's like, have you ever been in a situation where you're, you're talking with somebody and you're trying to get a little word in and they just say, go on and just say, go on. That is how some of us behave with God. We just keep on flowing with the, with the talking. And God, and sometimes I say, God must be just sitting there and say, give me a chance. No? Let me just say something to know. He does not get a chance. Uh, but it's a two-way communication, and we have to remember that. He says, our greatest model of prayer is obviously Christ Jesus himself. He was constantly in an attitude of prayer, and never more urgently than when in the face of suffering. This in show, shows us that God, Jesus did not only pray when, it was, um, when he was in trouble or it was suffering time, but he said he was constantly in a mode of prayer. So when time came that he you know, underwent his suffering, he had a relationship with God. And that is what we need to do. We need to have a close relationship with God in good times and in bad times. He says an amazing thing in scripture is how much time Jesus spent in prayer. Now Jesus didn't need to pray. Let us, let us just understand that. He really didn't need to be praying. But this was for our example and for his strength. He had only three years of public ministry, but he was never too hurried to spend hours in prayer. Sometimes we think that we're too busy to pray. And we wake up late. We go to bed late because we're tired, and we wake up late, and we, we rush through, and we say, God, thank you. Uh, just tell me if you have a good day, keep me safe. And we just rush through. It's true. It is true. And at the end of the day, it's another story. He said, but God, Jesus prayed before difficult tasks and crises in his ministry. No day began or closed in which he was not in communion with his father. As people of God, as women, this also should be our, ex our, our, our task, our example. He prayed long and he prayed often. He prayed briefly. Now listen to this part. He prayed briefly when he was in the crowd. He prayed a little longer when he was with his disciples. He prayed all night when he was alone. Have we, we catch that one? We do it in the reverse. Thank you. We pray the long prayers when we are at church and we are asked to pray. Right? And then when we go home, we say, look up a bridge version. You know, God, you know, it, be tired and I prayed at church today. So, but you understand. So just keep me safe and watch over me tonight. And that is it. We are not to do it in reverse, brethren. We are to follow Jesus', ex Jesus example. The, the, the short prayers are for the congregation when we are here. The long prayers are for when we are in communion with God. One on one. When we can pour out everything and tell him everything. Not that he doesn't know. But that is when we have those kind of prayers. When we go in our closets or in our bathroom, you ever go into your bathroom, mate, and you just, you just let out everything? All right, you're not doing that. I do that. All right, or when I'm at home alone, we just let out everything. That is when you and God have that one-on-one. -on -one. Right? Jesus prays when, he's pray when he was preparing for battle with the enemy. And Mark 1, the text that was read, it says, Now in the morning... Having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. We don't have to get up and go to any solitary place, because we have solitary places in our homes. If it's even in the bathroom, we have a little spot in our home where we can go and we can talk with God. And that is what is missing in many of us in our lives, that solitary time with God. It says, now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Brethren, as our model of prayer, we now see why we must heal ourselves from the inflicted wounds for praying haphazardly. We miss out on so much when we do not pray fervently and consistently. We miss out on a lot, brethren. Because there are things that God wants to say to us. He wants to spend time with us. And we are missing out on all of that because we have no time for him. What if we cut down on the time we spend talking on the phone? Not a word. What if we cut down on the time we spend watching foolishness on TV? Or discussing matters on the phone that are not important? 
or spending time on Facebook or so in people, other people's business, or following what Rihanna is doing or what whoever else is doing, and spend time with God. Think about it. Is it an act or an attitude? It is a matter of developing the biblical lifestyle of being able to pray without ceasing. This should be the motto of every true believer of Christ. And as we pray, our prayers never become merely an act, but an attitude of life. That is where we need to be. Because we pray as an act, you know, because we're expected to. And our, our, our spouse, our children, our neighbors, our church members, Expect us to pray. So when we come, we put on an act. And it is sad. Because it is just an act. Because while it is just an act, the attitude of prayer that should be a part of our life is not there. Can we make prayer a way of life so that it becomes a ceaseless conversation with our God? Can we do that? Should we do that? Can we become like the persistent widow? Just spoke about in Luke 18. And we know the story of the widow who went to the unjust judge and who the Bible says feared neither God nor man. And after she went every day and she was just at him, after a while he got, he got, he got frustrated and said, Look here, let me just deal with this matter because this lady went stressing me out. Huh? In our everyday language, that is what we would say. This lady goes stressing me out. So let me just deal with it. No. If it is that an unjust person, judge or king or ruler or, or, or boss or whoever, can give in and say, all right, let me just deal with this because this person really gets on top of my nerves right now or whatever. Can you imagine the person, you know, because of that, your, your persistence, deals with whatever issue you have. Can you imagine if we were persistent with God? Think about it. God longs to have us grasp his promises. To believe that they are intended for us as well as the original hero. So when the promises were made to the, or, or the patriarchs and so on in the Bible, they were also made for us brethren. So don't think it was only made to Moses and Job and so on. They are relevant to us and they were made for us. Instead, we wrestle alone with our dilemmas. Whatever issues we have, we choose to struggle with them all by ourselves when God is there. With a host of promises to help us. But because we estrange ourselves from him. We divorce ourselves from him. We separate ourselves from him. Then you know he's there with all of his love. And all of his care. And all of his promises to comfort us. And all of the responses to help us. And we will not turn to him. Because we have it all. You know we have it all set. We are good. We can manage. And especially for parents, you know, when you want to reach out and help your children. And it's like, they just think, okay, fine. Me good, man. I can manage. I have it all locked. I can do this. And you see that they're going down the wrong way. But because they think that they can manage, you say, all right. It's the same thing with God. He's, he's there. He wants to help us. But we're trying to do all of it on our own. He says, just told this parable, the parable of the, of the widow. To emphasize the need for persistence in our prayer life. And to do so until Jesus comes again. Not only when we're having challenges, but to be consistently praying until Jesus comes. He says, just wants us to get to the point, uh, he was, to get the point he's trying to make in the parable. The point being that persistence pays off. Pray until something happens. Amen. Pray until something happens. Says if a corrupt judge can eventually be worn down over a course of time to render justice, we can rest assured that God will be much quicker to deliver an even greater justice. Put it another way. If an unjust judge eventually listens to the widow, how much more quickly will a caring, loving God respond to his children? But let us be careful. It's our horizon to say. We must not take, we must take care that in, of how we interpret this passage. It is not that God is some sort of Santa Claus where you just reel off your wishes to him. And he's just there to answer. 
That is not how it works. And some of us, I go back to saying, we only go to God when we want something. And when we are in trouble. And we think that God is just there to, 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 just, to just cater to our needs and our whims and fancies. When we have struggles and when we are going through difficult times, our children know. Our church family sometimes knows. But it's when God answers the prayer, who knows? Huh? We don't go back and tell the children that boy, God worked it out. And we pray and give him thanks. No, we don't do that. And we had asked our church sisters and the group to pray for us because, uh, you know, having challenges at work and we need prayer. And when God answers the prayer, do we come back to the little group and say, boy, I'm going to tell you how God good. Do we do that? A lot of us don't do that. So, you know, so, so our children get the idea that God is only for the bad times. But when good times and when good things happen, no, we don't need to include God in this. This is not God's business. We need, to, we need to get this straight, brethren. Right? The same power in those prayers that in turn gives even more strength to our faith. In other words, a persistent prayer life is needed to maintain a healthy faith. What shape is our prayer life in today? As women, as mothers, as sisters, as brothers, as husbands, as sons, as leaders. What shape is our prayer life in? I hope we are not still caught in the trap of, you know, just repeating. You know, some of us, if we, if, if, and it happens to me. That's why I'm saying us. If we stop and think about how we pray, is the same prayer, you know? Am I alone? Sometimes it's the same prayer. The same prayer, you get up and say, boy, thank you, God, for keeping me through the night and help me to have a good day. Forgive me of my sins. And um, my shortcomings and whatever sins I will commit. Uh, um, and if, if we stop and think, a lot of times it's the same prayer. We keep repeating every day. Right? It's like a row. It's like our children are two times two and two times four. And it's the same, same repetition. We have not learned to spend quality time with God and to pour out our heart to him as you would with a friend. Some of us are quicker to, to, to tell other persons our business. Huh? And to pour out our heart to other persons than to God. It says, I, um, you know, we hope that we can do better. Prayer is a place where we need to spend time if we are to learn its power. Because there is power in prayer. And for those who have prayed and God has answered, we know that there is power in prayer. Amen? Can I get an amen? If God has ever done anything for you, if you have ever prayed and he has answered a prayer, let me hear you say amen. amen. Because truly God is awesome. God is an awesome prayer answering God. He said we can learn his power if we just pray. We can learn about prayer if we just pray. He says prayer is a unique way of being creative with silence and stillness. And it says in Psalm 46, verse 10, what does it say? Be still and know that I am God. Doesn't require us jumping up and down. Doesn't require us running all over the place. Doesn't require us to tell everybody from South to Petersfield our business. Doesn't require us to do any of that. It requires us to go to God, to pour out our hearts to him, and then wait on him for the answer. Because he says, be still. Means keep quiet. Just wait. Pause. Stand up right there, sir. Have a seat. And let me show you that I am God. Just as with the, the children, um, the crossing of the Red Sea. Just like that. He showed up and showed that he was God. And he can do the same thing for us. He can show up for us and show that he is God. So do we know the, that, that a person has more strength when he or she is at prayer than all the world's governing authorities have to rule their nations combined? When you are praying, you have more power than Putin or Biden or, 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 or wholeness or anybody else. When you are praying, because you are in contact with the king of universe, the universe. You are in contact with the all-powerful God. 
So you have the power from him. And as long as we maintain that contact with him, he will see us through. I hope that when we leave here today, we'll have a greater urgency for prayer. I hope we can develop a more consistent pattern that develops into, that develops into ceaseless, persistent communication with God. Why do we need to do that? Because when we pray, we create relationship with God. He says, Joshua 7 verse 10 says, why are you, God asks, why are you lying on your face like that? Many times we are cast down and we are you know, distressed and we are stressed and we are demotivated and delusioned. And God is asking us, why? Why are you cast down, O oh, my soul? Why? And John 6, 37 says, he who comes to me, I will not cast out. All we need to do is to go to him. Right? Psalm 27, verse 8. My heart has heard you saying, come and talk to me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. The invitation is there and God says, come, let us reason together. Come talk to me, man. Come, let us have a conversation. And, and some of us don't respond. But he said, he wants us to say, Lord, I'm coming. I'm coming. Because we have issues to talk about, you know. My issues may not be yours, and yours may not be mine. But we all have issues we need to talk to God about. We all need the strength. We all need the care. We all need the guidance. Right? It says, um, keep your wants, your joys, your sorrows, your cares, and your fears before God. You cannot burden him. Right? Sister Scott may be tired to hear me call and say, why is she so and so and so? Yeah, she may get tired. But we can't tire God. You cannot weary him. His heart of love is touched by our sorrows and even by our utterances of them. Take to him everything that perplexes our mind. Nothing is too great for him to bear, for he holds up the worlds. He rules over all the affairs of the universe. Nothing that in any way concerns our peace is too small for him to notice. There is no chapter in our experience too dark for him to read. There is no perplexity too difficult for him to unravel. No calamity can befall the least of his children. No anxiety harass the soul. No joy cheer, no sincere prayer escape the lips of which our heavenly father is unobservant. Or in of which he takes no immediate interest. Psalm 147 verse 3. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. The relation between God and each soul are as distinct and full as though there was no other soul except us. That is the relationship God wants to have with us. As if we are the only persons, the only person in the universe that he has to relate to. He's never too busy. You know, sometimes you're called, you, you have a need and you call somebody and you get a busy signal. Ever happened to you? Yes, man. Or you go, you, you go to a doctor's office or you have some, some emergency and you go and you have to sit and wait. Right? Because there are other persons ahead of you in the line. That is not so with God. He relates to you as if you are the only person in the universe. What a God. What a God. It says prayer leads to confession and submission. Psalm 139, 22 and 24, 23 and 24 says, Read with me if you are seeing it. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. When we pray, we are anticipating the latter rain. Not only will the latter rain empower our witness, but it will also strengthen us for even more troubling times. That are with the people of God. And if we think we are going through troubling times now. Just wait. You think we are going through troubling times? The half has never been told. And sometimes we get so caught up. With what is happening. That you know, we, we get distressed and overwhelmed. But brethren let me tell you something. We have more troubling times coming. We have more troubling times coming. And we need to be prepared for it. 
Prayer builds remembrance because it says this will be a sign among you and when your children ask in time to come, saying, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall answer them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it crossed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off and these stones shall be for a memorial to the children of Israel forever. What is your memorial for what God has done? What is the Jordan or the Red Sea that he has opened for you and taken you through? Do you have a memorial? Do you remember what God has done? Every now and again, do you remember his goodness and the, the mighty acts that he has done? What, do you, what, what is the altar? What is the memorial that you have set up to say, God, you are truly a great God. And I remember you. And every time I look at this, I remember how good you are. What is your memorial? We pray remembering how God has led us. He says, when was the last time we thought of a, the great things that God has done for us? The things that we take so much for granted. Huh? We pray every day and we thank God for life. Do we understand? Do, are we truly thankful for life? We thank God for food. And we have it to spare. And many of us, if we go to bed hungry, it's not because we don't have food. It's because we choose not to cook. Amen? Hello? Amen? Oh, so I'm, I'm alone in this. All right. Sometimes we have food till it's stay in the fridge and we have to throw it away. Not you? And when you cook the rice and peas or whatever, and it stays there and you eat out of it Sabbath or you eat Sunday, but Monday you don't want that again. You understand? And when we cook different, different things, it stays in the fridge because every time... You think, you say, no, Sam, we don't want that again. We want something new. We, have, we thank God for food. But have we considered the many people who are starving? So when we say, oh God, thank you for the food and thank you for fresh air and so on, are you considering the persons who are living in polluted areas where they have no fresh air? The things that we take so much for granted. Consider there are many persons who don't have these. And we ask ourselves, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? That is the question. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? Prayers, as we come down to the end, prayer is not just for emergencies. Right? Neither is it a matter of posture or position or vocabulary or vocation. You understand? It is not your statue. It is not how well you can elaborate and how well you can, you, you know, you, you can pronounce or enunciate. It's not how well spoken you are. It is not the letters behind your name. It is not how well you can stand up erect and pray or how good you are at kneeling for long periods and praying. It is not the job that you have. It is not your office in church. That is not it. Prayer is a place in the heart and mind. Prayer is a way of life. And we are reminded, prayer is persistent, faith-filled communication with our Heavenly Father. What have you and God been talking about lately? That is the question. What have you and God been talking about lately? Have you even been having a conversation? Think about it. My sister's Especially on today, Women's Day of Prayer. Think about it. When was the last time you, you and God had a conversation? What did that conversation entail? Were you just asking for things and asking for things and asking for things? Were you thanking him for things? Was it a mixture of both? What was the conversation like? He says, look, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and greatness. And we have heard his voice from the heart of fire. Today we have seen that God has, can speak to us humans and yet we can live. We need to have conversations with God. We need to be praying and thanking him. We need to cry to him and have him answer our prayers. We need to ask him to attend to our prayers. Because sometimes our hearts are overwhelmed. So, Psalm 61 verses 1 to 3. 
Hear my cry, O oh Lord. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth I will cry to thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. Hear my cry, O oh Lord. Attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That is higher than I. Let us go again. Hear my cry, O Lord. Hear my cry, O Lord. Attend on to my prayer. God ever come for you. From the ends of the earth will I cry on to thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That is higher than I. One last time, one last time. Hear my cry, O oh Lord, and stand on to my prayer. From the ends of the earth, will I cry on to thee. tower from the enemy right when we are overwhelmed we go to him and we ask him right to lead to, to, to just be there for us right when my heart is overwhelmed and sometimes our hearts get so overwhelmed right he says right when we go to him we ask as he, he leads us to the rock that is higher than we are and we can rely, we can fall on that rock and know that he is there for us. There's power in prayer. There's power in prayer. And sisters, on our International Day of Prayer for Women, let us remember there is power in prayer. God's answers are wiser than our prayers. And I will close the same way I began. Pray. Yes, pray as you have never prayed before.